So we've defined a formal notation that lets us write clear statements. And it's important that we use it to do that and that we not write nonsense. So let's look at some examples. And let's start with some things we can say something about. So let's imagine that we have A and B are primitive objects. They're not sets. Uh, capital A and B are, in fact, sets of primitive objects. And let's imagine that P and Q are logical predicates. All right, what can we say with these things? Consider this example. B is the set of all values x uh, such that x possesses the p property or x possesses the q property. That makes sense. Right. And let's check it. Or is a logical claim, uh, is a logical operator, and its inputs have to be logical claims. And in fact, they are. p of x is and q of x is. Uh, and we've defined B to be a set of all values that possess uh, this combined property. Let's say that what was on our mind as we wrote that were this picture. And the blue part is the uh, set of objects that possess the P or the Q property, which is what we've written here. It might have occurred to us to write something different. That is nonsense. Right. Now, what we were thinking, perhaps, when we wrote it is, suggested by this picture, that we want the union of everybody who possesses the P property and everybody who possesses the Q property. But we can't write it this way because we can't union logical operators. What we wrote first was right. All right, let's look at another example. Suppose I write this. For all x, P of x implies A is a subset of B. That makes sense. Sure. And let's double check. A and B are sets, and one, a set can be a subset of another one. And that produces a logical claim, implies as a logical operator, so it needs two logical claims as its argument. We already established that this was, and P of x also is. So we're good. Suppose that I had in mind when I wrote this something like this situation. Uh, a is a subset of B. And I wanted to claim that uh, if P of x is true, then this has to be true it might have occurred to me to write something like this. That is nonsense. Why? It's true that there's some sense in which A is smaller than B, but I can't write it this way. Because less than or equal to is an operator that applies to things like numbers, sizes, that kind of thing. Um, and A is a set and B is a set. They're not numbers. They're not comparable in that way. That makes sense. Right. So now what I really meant to say before was that the size of A is less than or equal to the size of B, and that is another sensible and, in this case, true uh, claim that I could have made. The one in the middle was nonsense. All right, let's consider this example. I assert A intersect B implies A union B. That is nonsense. Right. What's wrong? Well, this is a logical operator. It needs to have logical statements as its arguments. A intersect B is a set, and so is A union B. They're not logical claims, and thus we can't join them with an implies. Suppose that this is the situation that I were trying to describe. By the way, whenever somebody writes nonsense, you're tempted to try to figure out what they might have meant. Now, you should not put that burden on the people who read what you write, but let's just play the game for a minute. Um, all right, so suppose that we have this situation, and the hatch part here is the intersection of A and B, and the blue part is their union. And perhaps the claim I'm trying to make is that if any, some arbitrary element is in the intersection of A and B, then it must also be in the, uh, in the union of A and B. That is suggested by the picture. How could I say that? That makes sense. Right. What I'm trying to say is that A intersect B is a subset of a union B set, set, set operator, and I'm good. That's what I should have written. All right, let's consider this example. B is an element of B is a subset of A. That is nonsense. Right. Why? 
B is a subset of A is a logical claim. It's either true or false. Little b is an element, and it could be or not be in some set, but element of requires that its second argument be a set. This isn't a set. It's a logical claim. So this is junk. Let's try to imagine what somebody might have had in mind when they wrote that. Maybe this. B is a subset of A, and perhaps that little b is an element of, let's say, the inner piece of that. Suppose that were what we wanted to say. Maybe we would write this. That makes sense. Right. Now what we're saying is that one logical claim, b is an element of the set b, and a second logical claim, b is a subset of a. This next example is more subtle. Uh, again, remember that we have primitive objects that aren't sets. We have a and b, which are sets of primitive objects. And we have the logical predicates, p and q. Uh, in this example, we're not going to be concerned just with whether something is a set, but whether it's a set of primitive elements, or a set of sets, or a set of sets of sets, and so forth. All right, so let's look at our claim. The claim is that A is a subset of its own power set. That is nonsense. Now, you may be thinking, hmm, why? After all, A is a set, and the power set of A is a set, and we're claiming a subset relationship. Yes, at that level, that's OK. But if we make clear the difference between sets of elements, sets of sets of sets, we see that this can't make any sense. Let's, let's look at a specific example to try to see what's going on here. Suppose that A is the set 1, 2, 3. All right, in that case, here's its power set. It has eight elements, uh, 2 to the third power. And note that 1, 2, 3 is one of them. There you go, right there. All right, so now let's look at some claims that we might want to make. That makes sense. Sure. 1, 2, 3 is an element of the power set of A. There it is. That makes sense. Now we're claiming that one, the set that contains 1, 2, 3 is a subset of the power set of A. In other words, we have a set here, and all of its members are sets that are in the power set of A, and that's obviously true. There's uh, uh, one, two, three. So that's good. That is nonsense. Note that this is the claim that we just made over here. We just substituted this specific example, one, two, three, for A. One, two, three cannot be a subset of the power set of A because anything that's the, a subset of the power set of A has to itself be a set of sets, like here. This is a set of primitive elements. So if we're keeping our type straight, that's nonsense. All right, so the moral is we have a very clear notation, and it lets us write things that make sense and can easily be evaluated. We have to use it correctly. If we write nonsense, people have to try to struggle to figure out what we might have meant. And that's not the point uh, of this exercise. <laughs>